All right, everybody, this will be just a little quick thing here. A uh, thought crossed my mind. Um, so this will be warning to all politicians I'm running for president 2024. Part uh, 117A, I believe. It's just a little add-on to uh, about deception and the uh, things we embroil ourselves in and Get, get misled by and, and things like this as, as far as um, like how the media treats things like especially with like George Floyd and um, uh, I guess you go back to the begin, uh, Ferguson stuff um, where you got like a little part of the story and what you saw you know or heard at first alarmed you and, and made you angry then later on you got more Maybe these agencies, these news agencies and stuff, you know, they they have an agenda out there to, maybe they're following some type of agenda to cause civil unrest, something like that. Um, and then once they get the ball rolling, then they release the rest of the stuff to cover their asses. So, so they're not actually lying. Like, they, they showed you what happened to George Floyd, and they're not saying, they won't come out and say, you know, directly, this cop killed this guy. They'll show what happened. They'll let the people on the sidewalks be screaming about how he's killing them and stuff and everything. Even though they probably have already seen the rest of the video. The news agency. Probably already seen what transpired before. And that he was screaming he couldn't breathe even before. So they're just going to let you make your mind up that that's what happened. Um, that, um, you know, um, for their political gains or whatever, they, they probably already have it. Hey, if you get any stories that, you know, we can, we can um, cause some kind of chaos or something that we can, we can parlay into... Uh, some political power or something even if it destroys neighborhoods and they don't care you know but um it's called you know lies by omission you understand so they can say well we didn't lie to you about george floyd you know suppose you were to find out he actually died from drugs and whatever and all, everything that happened because of his death was totally unnecessary and all these people that went out and did all these violent things and stuff um, they weren't exactly lied to to get them to go and do all that they just weren't told the whole truth you understand you see what I'm saying so then they can show the rest of the story and say well we never told you this or that uh, you, you gathered all that from your own you drew your own conclusions from the little bit that we presented you. You understand? So they're not going to take responsibility for what they incite. You understand? So they're legally protecting themselves. They're just reporting. They're just showing. They're not inferring anything. They're not saying anything. They're not showing you the whole truth. Hey, just show this little bit, because it, if you just show this, it looks this way. If you show the whole thing, it might not look that way to everybody. We might not get the response we want. So don't show the whole thing. And then when, when they show that little bit and it causes all kinds of junk to happen, then, they, then they're like, okay, not, now put out the rest so we can cover our ass. So, it's just an idea that a lot of these stories and stuff and everything, um, whether it's something like that or with the election, uh, with what they tell you about going to wars and stuff, um, like I said, they gave themselves permission to lie. They, they use uh, government-produced news stories. Um, I'm talking heads, even your local talking heads are getting paid pretty good money. 
they're not going to uh, want to go out and get a real job, you know, working in the hot sun or freezing their ass off, you know, if they're up north or wherever, uh, doing construction or something like that. They'd much rather, you know, bitch and moan and complain about having to get up at four in the morning to go in and do a two-hour newscast or something and collect good money and be able to, you know, hobnob or whatever with the local politicians and athletes and any celebrities that come to town. So they're just, they just read what, what's put in front of them. So they probably don't see any fault in it. Hey, this is what we're giving the report, you know, this, you know, and then a lot of them all get, you know, their news stories. I mean, traveling, uh, you know, you expect like the major national news, no, no matter, matter what city or town you're in, uh, even if, if it's small television station, you're going to get those big stories because, you know, they're put out by the, you know, um, um, Associated Press and what, what's the other, you know, Reuters and all these big things and, and the news stations just take that as copy and, and just repeat it. You know, and um, so you expect that, but then, you know, I noticed travel, traveling around, there'll be some, I guess you call them the fluff stories. And it's like with all the stuff going on in the world, all right, you're watching the news and in, you know, town A, and they got some story about, you know, um, whatever, a skateboarding chihuahua or something. And you get over in the town B the next day or whatever, and you're watching the news there. And guess what? Lo and behold, look at that. There's the story about the skateboarding chihuahua. I don't know. Maybe it's their way of trending. You know, when you get crap on your... It shows what's trending. And sometimes you, you're like, what? You go to it, and it's like... Uh, just total something totally lame. And it's like, who? how could this be trending? Isn't that supposed to be something that's like real popular? But it's like they're feeding you what they want to trend or something. I don't know. But, um, so I think it's, it's fair you got to keep that in mind too. Because that goes on a lot in society. Shit, that goes on in marriages. You know, lies by omission. You know. Um. You know. Hey, Hunter, you, you going out with the guys to the bar tonight? Or, or you know, hey, honey, are you going out with your girlfriends to the bar, you know, tomorrow night or, or anything? Well, I'm not planning on it. And lo and behold, um, they end up going out. You say, I thought you said you weren't, weren't going. No, I said, you know, we weren't planning on it. So they can play it off as a, you know, spur of the moment thing or something, you know. Uh, and other things, that maybe that's a bad example, but you know what I'm saying. Lies by omission. Um, so I think the news uh, media is playing that game with a lot of these stories. So they can cover their asses, you know, just, just show them, just show them that little bit. And don't infer anything. Let them draw their own conclusions. So they can't blame us for inciting them to do stupid shit. And then we'll show the rest later. And if they still don't catch on, hey, we're free and clear. If we show them the rest, and they still don't drop, put two and two together, that, uh, you know, what happened there isn't what everybody perceives to have happened there. See what I'm saying? You know, everyone perceives that this cop killed George Floyd in cold blood. Hurry up, bury him and everything, get the cop arrested. Uh, just report, you know, hey, the, the cop was arrested on these charges and stuff. Hey, we never inferred that that cop killed him. We just, sh we just showed the video and the, the people on the sidewalk were screaming that, you know, they were killing him. Because he kept screaming he couldn't breathe but he was screaming he couldn't breathe before they ever got to that point they didn't show that so perception by large instead of what the truth actually is 
or could be, because it could be that George Floyd either injected or took a bunch of fentanyl and methamphetamine and that caused him to have cardiac arrest or respiratory respiratory failure or something and he could have he might have died whether that cop showed up there or not you understand So in that case, maybe you could say, well, they didn't get a medical help quick enough or something. I don't know when they, because he started complaining about not feeling good or whatever, and, and he couldn't breathe in that fairly early on. So I don't know if they called for an ambulance right away, or if, uh, you know, they just blew off what he was saying. But um, the whole thing could be, Hey man, this guy died from an overdose. But the mass perception is is he was cold-bloodedly killed by a cop on the street. Now there's no way of telling how much weight that cop was putting on the back of his neck. But for it to cut off his windpipe, it would have to be an awful lot because he would have to break vertebrae or do something. Because if you're laying on the ground on your stomach and like he was and he was turning his head back and forth, his neck's not touching the ground. Now if you put if you put something under his neck, like a four by four or something, and then put your knee on on the back of his neck, yeah, you can cut off his windpipe that way. But I don't recall anything being under his neck. He was turning his head from side to side and screaming and yelling. Um, so if you're laying down, like you know, your chin is touching the ground, not your neck. Your chest is touching the ground, not your neck. And I understand if you have a whole bunch of weight on your back for a long time, yes, you're not going to be able to breathe if the weight is on your back. Especially if you're struggling around and things like that. Um, you can suffocate because of weight on your back not being able to breathe but if I remember right I might have to go back and look the cop was just like kneeling near him with one knee on his neck and there's no way of telling how much weight unless you look and see if there was broken vertebrae or something you know what have you so I guess you gotta wait for the trial for all these things to come out and see what's going on. But actually, for all we know, those autopsies could have been rushed. Everyone perceives the cop did this. That's what they're going with. Um, how much drugs was in his system and this and that? Maybe we don't. We can't know now because they hurried up and buried him. And maybe they, I don't even know if you could get the body exhumed if there was a way to tell anything else further about his death. But the politicians wanted to use it. You know, they dressed up in all their African garb and all that kind of stuff. Um, the news media has used it. Um, you watch the morning shows with Gail King and all these other people. The way they played it up big, era, you know, the whole nine yards. And this could have just, you could have, all you could have witnessed, could have actually witnessed, was a man who did too, many, too much drugs, who overdosed, and was going to die regardless if those cops were there or not. And that's the truth. Could, it could be. Is it? I don't know. Was the investigation, was everything botched right from the start? Maybe we need to take a look at that when one of these incidents happens. Of people being able, you give, give them time to say, wait a minute. Let's look at all the information first. Before we go burn down half our city. We know they're playing games with what they show us and everything. Let's wait 
before we go burn down half our city. They want to blame Trump for racial tension. I think you got to start looking at the news media. And trying to use every single thing that happens in some way to cause racial tension. You know, because cause whether you want to admit it or not, whether you think the things you do out in the street are justified or not, I'm telling you here now, from many perspectives of, of white people, the perspectives of many white people, who may not be racist or anything like that. I mean, because I was raised, you know, no matter the color of your skin, um, you all bleed red. You don't judge anybody by the color of their skin. God created us all. Um, and so I advanced through life like that. But then I can tell you, once I got into high school, because my mom told me stories about when, when before I was born, you know, how they traveled from the East Coast out to California, and they traveled down through the South, and different things she saw there and everything like that, and she was always, oh, those poor people, what they've gone through, and this and that and everything, and hey, I'm down with that. I, I, I agree with that. There, there are a lot of African Americans who have suffered, you know, the lynchings, the, you know, you name it, go back to the slavery, you, you know, I'll tell you, you got to move past that. This was a horrible time, but that doesn't mean the whole country, all white people are racist and, and we all benefited from it and all that other garbage that's out there. It was a horrible, horrible thing, but it was here mostly in the colonies before the states were ever uh, made, before this country was formed as a nation and the founding fathers had plans to get rid of it from the beginning and it would have been gotten rid of sooner if it wasn't for the War of 1812 and some other things. And then we finally had a civil war to get rid of it. So I'm not disregarding that. I'm just saying there, there, there were more horrible things with lynchings and other things that I, I think, you know, if you want to revisit anything, go back and open up some of those cases and try and get justice on a per case basis. But, um... From, and then growing up, and I got off track there, but then growing up and going to, to school, especially when I got into, you know, middle school and then high school and stuff, a lot of African American kids in school were, were cool, they were fine, they were just there like everybody else, do their, do their school work, um, do like they were supposed to, and uh, go home. But especially when I was in Lake Worth, Florida, that school was a zoo. All right. Um, I mean, and, and just certain parts of town, being white, if you went there, forget about it. Um, there was just such hatred or whatever, or just, I, I, I don't know what you call it. You know, and don't want to sound like a Karen here, but, but actually, you know, every time you call, you know, that's another thing. Even the news media, them day show, day morning uh, shows and stuff. Oh, it's, look, it's, look at this. If, if somebody, if it's somebody white is cl complaining about uh, a group of black people doing something or anything like that. And I know there's a lot of assholes out there. But there's assholes of every color who complain about everything under the sun. But automatically, hey, they're a Karen. Hey, they're a Karen. Well, I, I can tell you from my own personal experience, everything's not a Karen moment. You know, you can't absolve. If you're black, you can't absolve. And, and most blacks are rational enough that they don't absolve bad behavior from other black people towards white people. And they know there's legitimate stories of, of uh, you know, I'm sure plenty of white kids who went to predominantly black schools could tell all their horror stories. And you might call them Karens. 
But like Van Jones, uh, he was just on CNN saying something, oh, now they use the N-word in school openly and all this since Trump's been president and all this. Bullcrap. That would be on the news every freaking night in this climate. Um, they they would have you'd have video of that kind of crap going on every night, you know. So I don't know what his reasons are, but Van Jones, you're a Karen. You're a Karen, and it's like you, con you always run into, you know. How about Oprah when she went overseas and went on a shopping thing, and then they were kind of like, oh, but that cost like you know this. They I guess they didn't know who she was or whatever. Well, that cost, you know, this much money or something like this. You know, quit being a Karen, Oprah. Quit being a Karen. Every time I hear, hear somebody that's black, you know, uh, saying, yeah, you know, uh, you don't know what it's like to go in a store and have everybody eyeball you just because, you know, the color of your skin, they think you're going to steal this and that. Well, I'm sorry, there's enough evidence out i mean just look at the looting going on this and that there's there's enough things and how many stores get robbed and it's been by a black person so of course the clerk's gonna watch again and everything and everything but how how'd you like it every time you know i've been eyeballed in stores i like to walk around and look at stuff i take forever in stores i have no doubt that i have had security people watch me forever in a store You know, it happens. So what? You're not doing anything wrong. You're not stealing anything. So what? It's security people doing their jobs. Maybe they're doing it poorly, but they're still just trying to do their jobs. Big deal. But how'd you like to be called a Karen every time you bring that up? Yeah, man, I go in the store and that. Shut up, Karen. Shut up, Karen. So how'd you like that shit? You know, um, so, but, you know, there was a time when I got older, you know, and, uh, had some bad experiences, you know, black kids at school, black guys at school, um, just in their whole attitude, you white mother would we'll kick your ass, mother, the fuck you will. You know, and then, then trying to, you know, when my mom would be, you know, uh, sympathetic and stuff to things she saw on the news or whatever and be like, Shh. maybe once. You know, you know, I, I started, you know, a few bad experiences and you can take somebody who's totally, you know, uh, oblivious to racism or anything like that. And then they, you know, wait a minute. I try and get along with everybody, but these people here who I've been feeling sorry for don't seem to give a shit about anything or anybody else around them. And I'm getting accosted walking through the school and stuff. To hell with them. So I'm trying to tell you that when white people see all this crap going on in the street, they might be the most least racist person there is but then they see it over and over again and they'll they'll start to be like screw them you see what i'm saying so if you get these news stories of these incidents between cops and african americans um don't fly off the handle right away because it might just be the new the news people baiting you into doing a bunch of ugly shit so that more white people turn against you do you understand that do you see what I'm getting at there so I said it, it, a lot of the stuff has seemed like some kind of big psyops going on I know a lot of you out there I, we, I don't give a damn what's going on I'm going out there I'm fucking shit up I'm tired of this shit. Well, that's your prerogative, man. That's your prerogative. I'm just saying maybe you ought to step back and take some thought and try and find better ways 
to handle situations. Because we do have a court system. We do have, a, you know, it might be messed up. It might favor the rich. Don't tell me it just favors one color. It's money that it favors. So, um, I'm just saying, you know, maybe, maybe, whether it's through social media or through the television news media, you need to maybe step back and say, you know what, I'm going to wait for the rest of the story. You know, like Paul Harvey, I'm going to wait for the rest of the story. Because there's some crooked shit going on. And the, the political groups want to use us all for their advantage. No matter what color you are, they want to use you. Or whether you're a man or woman, they want to use you for them. And so they can keep their nice, cushy jobs getting rich. While they put their hands in everybody else's pockets, taking taxes they're not supposed to be taking. For reasons, they're not supposed to be taking taxes. So, just food for thought out there, you know, lies by omission. Fake news, lies by omission. Psyops. Um, what the hell is really going on? All right, so I'll leave you all with that. Wish you all the best out there. Have a good Thanksgiving. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Adios.